guys and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect and today we're going to be doing a little bit of an experiment and finding out what auto grower is the best for mystical agriculture. So I hope you guys are ready. So where we left off yesterday, I wanted to go over a little bit more about this experience and why we have it and what we're going to use it for. Um, so right now I have the dock set up. I did do a little bit of testing. Some, some people said that you know, maybe this, this uh, from the last time they tried it, it had a little bit of problems, but I did test it and it actually works great. So all I have to do is place this in here and it does work as a large tank. I can export, I can import into it and I can export out of it. That's all I want to use it for. Um, I need to be able to store large quantities of the fluid and then pull it out. That's, that's perfect. Like that's exactly what I want to be able to do. So I did test that going into this tank and vice versa going back out. You can see the small one only holds uh, a little bit of fluid here. And I can, of course, just pull it out. You can see right here, bam. Um, so what do I want to do with this? Uh, well, I want to upgrade this for one thing. This bad boy definitely needs to be upgraded to the top tier. So let's go ahead and just uh, just do that. Uh, it is going to retain the essence. And I was also thinking about doing this um, as well with our items that we get from this. Like, why not? By the way, we should have tons of emeralds at this point. And it's crazy that we're gonna go from emeralds, I think, to diamonds. Already at this point, like that's so much fluid right there. Um, I, yeah, I, I, you know what? We might just go with this. You know, let's, might as well just go above and beyond, right? Let's go ahead and upgrade this even further. <laughs> why not? You know, we have we have so many diamonds. Why, why not just, you know, spin them all? There we go. And then what was the last thing? Obsidian? Because of course, obsidian is just better than diamond in all ways. And there we go, we have this tank. Now, does it go any higher? It goes up to the nether star. <laughs> this, oh gosh, that's the highest tier. Okay. Uh, wait, is the highest tier the max? Yes, the highest tier is max int. Um, so that is technically the largest amount of fluid you could technically have in Minecraft. So pretty crazy. It's like 2 billion uh, and, and so on. <laughs> so I'm sure somebody who, uh, who writes mod, uh, mods definitely has this number memorized it's like yeah 2.1 is usually what i say 2.1 or 2. Point, yeah it's 2.1 billion it's a pretty crazy number but um yeah we can actually use this so i'm just gonna go ahead and break this mechanism tank and with this one uh we'll make break that by the way the way i used uh how i got this dock um the easiest way i think to get concrete which you just use white concrete by the way if i place this in here by the way this should um this should work uh, did me right clicking that not do anything? It's supposed to open up for me. This one is not giving me the option to look into it. Now that's different because the other one did. Uh, oh, I hold shift and I can see. Okay. Let me go back. Where did it go? Oh, it goes in my inventory. Okay. So if I, can I open this? Weird. Alt right click to swap. Okay, so I, I can't actually open this. Is it actually storing the fluid though? I don't I don't even know if it's storing fluid. That kind of has me worried actually. It's not sending the fluid directly to this. I wonder if this is actually a broken item because it already had the material in it first. I, I can't even open it. Interesting. Okay, so I just did a trade -a there. I just went ahead and deleted the item that I had and, and brought out a new one. And so long, I guess, as it doesn't already have something in it when you upgrade it. So be careful doing that so you don't waste all your resources. Um, yeah, now, now it works, but it still doesn't let me see it in my inventory. I don't, I don't think the, even the first one let me do that. But you can see now we can actually see it stored. Um, so just so long as it does what it's supposed to do, just just storing the essence, that's all I want. And then later on, we're going to have this piped out. Now, I have been working on a little bit of a project. I did ask you guys over on Twitter um, what you guys thought of this little project that I'm working on. And uh, so far, I have gotten good responses. A lot of you guys have been uh, pretty, pretty happy about this, which I'm, I'm kind of excited for. It is a little bit of a build that I was doing. You might be kind of you might have kind of got a sneak peek of it, but right here. We kind of take our path and we go through and down here and voila. Man, I just, I love when I kind of blend like just our stuff together. Like this, this sort of is in the same 
idea as this area. But you can see it is very blue with some cyan terracotta mixed in. I thought the cyan terracotta like really like fit really well. I wanted to start using more terracotta. So um, this worked out great. It's a great material for like the roof and stuff. And then, of course, I use my buddy's uh, mod Simply Lights. I, I do absolutely love this mod. Anything that adds lights that aren't like in your face. Hmm. And, and these lights are really cool. I've not used the rods and I think they look a lot better than the uh, the end rods. So very, very nice. Now with that room in mind, I made it for a very specific purpose. We have three different types of machines that we need to work through and find out what is the best for growing mystical agriculture plants. Not just mystical agriculture plants, but, but very specific mystical agriculture plants. Um, so that way we can get particular resources from certain ones. Um, we already have a great farm that supplies the base uh, Inferium Essence, so that way we can upgrade, because I think at the moment I have like almost 50-something Supremium Essence, so that farm is working great, right? Um, but right here, I, we definitely want to figure out what's the best. Now, a Garden Cloche, I have heard that it is not as fast as it used to be um, in this version, so that'll be interesting to see. But it is going to take a little bit of setup to get this going, as we need to make a cold Coke furnace to get a little bit of... Um, the treated oh yeah the the, the creosote oil um and then the hopping bonsai of course we need to make hopping or hopper hawks which i love hopper hawks by the way they are an amazing thing that is in batania that is great to use for just about anything uh because of the way its filter system works for picking up items and then we also have the phytogenic insulator now this thing is probably one of the most underused <laughs> thermal machines uh by far um I mean, that's coming from my experience, uh, from people that I've seen, and it's just it's just a super underused machine. Um, but we it might actually be the most promising machine. I haven't tested it yet, and Lumium is not hard to get, as um, there is a nice little crafting recipe down here that gets us four, and we don't even have to uh, grind the ingots up. Straight up just use silver, tin ingots, glowstone, and a fire charge. Like, pfft, that's easy. So that's going to be a great way to get these. So... Uh, let's talk about making this. That is going to be the big thing, though. We need a Coke oven. Um, so, immersive engineering we go. I guess this is going to be a way to drag us into immersive engineering, as I haven't really touched it yet. Um, immersive engineering is a beautiful mod, and of course it has its its ins and outs, I guess you can say. It has its uses. Um, we need to look for the Coke brick. I think that's what it's going to be called. Yeah, the Coke brick. So yeah, just a little bit of clay and sandstone. That's another thing. Yes, sandstone. And we're gonna need 27 of these in total. Um, of course we can make sandstone ourselves. But uh, yeah, Coke brick, it's gonna be a multi-block. Um, now I thought we might've gotten the hammer from one of those like villages. Sometimes there'll be a hammer, but immersive engineering does have its own like tool that it uses. And it is called an immersive engineering hammer. There we go. It was string. Perfect. Now it is a multi-block, like I said. Uh, so we do need a kind of a place to put this. Um, I was thinking about placing it in the wall down here anyways. Um, since we do kind of have this like, I don't know, this room. Um, so we could probably place it in the wall uh, or actually right here might be a good spot and kind of cover it up. And then over here, we might be able to put another machine. Hmm. I don't know. Like right here might actually be a really good spot. Now that I look at it, uh, we could probably cover up. Yeah, it's pretty much going to be completely covered. Um, of course, I can always add a little bit of uh, dirt and stuff to kind of fill it in and make it look a little bit better. Yeah, this is going to be great. Okay. So I'll just use the dirt to cover it up. And we're going to have it set back in the wall. Look at that. So I just wanted to place the last few bricks to show you that it is completely filled. Like it is a solid cube uh, that is three by three um now once you're done just take this hit the middle side or whatever side you want it's going to be in the middle um and then you just activate it as you can see we do have it showing up over here but you know what covers this up better than anything a little bit of dirt also i don't know where the lightning is coming from i keep seeing lightning every now and then i have no idea where the lightning is coming from but there is definitely lightning around so that's kind of horrifying all right, so with this machine made, what do we need to put in here? Well, you can put logs in here and make charcoal, or you can actually put um, like actual coal in there. 
and that's going to make uh, coal coke, which is used to make um, steel from this mod uh, with another three by three block. So uh, I recommend just taking some of this and getting it put in there. One block is actually going to go pretty quickly and is going to give you a pretty decent amount of creosote. Actually, the block form is going to give you the most creosote. So while that's working, I went ahead and made myself a phytogenic uh, insulator. Right, so we have that there. I can't believe that. Wow, that he killed himself. Um, but yeah, we need to get this set up now. I do have my yeah Batania Apothecary over here. So I need to, of course, grab that, fill it up a little bit. And what we're going to do here is we're going to place one redstone root. Basically, all of these different materials are going to end up becoming a part of this. Now, a air rune, if you remember, it's just these materials to make an air rune. I don't remember if this actually consumes the air rune or not. We're going to need two light gray petals and uh, two, two gray petals and then a seed. And yeah, it does actually consume the rune. So um, keep that in mind because the hopper hawk does cost a actual rune to make even though making that rune is not hard and you can probably make quite a few of them pretty quickly. So I would like to kind of show you this hopper hawk before we actually use it, because I want to show you that it does have some pretty nice uses and we could technically use it to farm our bees over here instead of using these uh, ender hoppers, which it would probably work a little bit better. Um, now these do work better, these hoppers with a mana source nearby, but you can see this is the area that it can pick up. Um, and I don't think that it has a mana source that it's detecting. It might though. Uh, so you can see no mana source is currently detected. So this is its range without anything. Uh, so without it receiving mana. Um, so what, what, what does it do? Well, if there's a chest next to it, it will put the items into the chest. So if I drop this here, it should pick this up. Of course I have my magnet on. Um, it should eventually pick it up and put it in the chest like you just saw there. So now it's in the chest. Now, let's just say we have a couple of different items on the ground. It's going to pick those up too. It's going to pick up every item that is on the ground and throw it here. Now, the way to filter this is to do this, uh, this right here. Um, so if we place an item frame on here and we put the item in the item frame, this now goes, okay, I'm only going to pick up the item in the item frame. But you can invert this. So you see right here, it says pick up only items and frames. If we shift right click this or put this in uh, the function mode, uh, we can actually shift right click this to change this. So you can see right here, pick only items, not in frames, uh, pick up any items or pick up only items in frame, which I, I do prefer this one. Of course, you can cover this chest with an item frame here, 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 and even on this side. So you do have quite a few slots technically. Um, oh my gosh, this guy. Uh, I did have to remove the sound filters mod uh, in this particular version, but um, so now if I throw down, like, let's say this item, it's not going to pick it up at all. So it's uh, it's just going to leave it there, but it will hover, pick up all this iron and it should go poof and there you go. It's in here. Now it should even pick it up from the range that we can see here. You can see it can pick up from all the way over here, so pretty much a nine by nine around it. And I think it's a bigger area with um is if it has a mana pool that's near it so we have some machines to now test let's go ahead and get this going now the first one isn't going to be too difficult to set up we have a chest and literally this goes right on top so pretty simple here um however it does require the farmland so we're going to put some premium farmland in here that is going to be the best option we have at the moment i think this does go up one more tier um farmland Yes, it does go up to Insanium, uh, which we could technically make Insanium, um, but not in mass. We don't have enough yet for mass. So I'm going to go with Suprema right now, just kind of keep the test kind of normal and within the mods range, because this is actually an add-on. All right, so now that we have that, let's take a look at this one. This is going to be the Garden Cloche. Now, the Garden Cloche is going to require a bit more. Um, I'm actually going to put it over here because we're going to have these two machines sort of near each other. This one does take a bit more space and uh, it's a little bit taller. It does require three blocks tall. Um, and then we also have the, of course, a phytogenic insulator. I'm gonna place this one right here. Okay, in the background, these both need water. So I'm gonna place a sink and we are just gonna use basic pipes to plug that in to both of these. Uh, like I said, these are going to consume water here, just like that. Both of them will be filled. Um, now, they both can receive fertilizer, so 
What I plan on doing is just going with bone mill. Uh, this, however, can have a better type of fertilizer um, from Thernal, uh, which is called Phytogrow. Let me see Phytogrow. Uh, but Phytogrow, as you can see, does require a bunch of items in order to make it in the first place. Um, and I just, I think bone mill is probably the easiest. If we were going to put anything in here, bone mill would probably be the easiest thing to obtain. So bone mill it is. Let's go ahead and grab two stacks of bone mill. Just to try and, try and get these things um, sort of sorted here. So you can see this now consumed that bone mill. Make sure it's got everything in there. And then this also gets bone mill and it can go down there. Make sure to make this scientifically accurate as possible. Go ahead and do this as well. And honestly, I don't know if this is going to be faster than doing it any other way, uh, like the normal farming. I don't really have a good way of testing that other than breaking that and trying to do it that way. I don't know. I just want to go with this. Now, this is going to they're both going to require power. So I do have both of them their own separate power source. So this can go here, be connected. And then this is also going to be connected. Perfect. Get that hooked in. And now they're all running with power. Perfect. This does, however, this can accept some upgrades. Um, so we might look into that as well um, with some simple to put in here upgrades. This, however, does not have any upgrades, but it can accept that Supremium farmland, which should hopefully help it. I don't know, though. Um, as you can see, it's now filled with power. That's filled with power and we're ready to go. All we got to do is figure out what we're going to be planting. So at the moment, Inferium may not be the best option for testing. Um, I just don't think that that's going to be the best test as this machine, the Garden Cloche, um, will give you a pretty good yield on your Inferium, depending on what you're using. So um, you can see right here, this is going to actually give you a byproduct of Fertilizer Essence, which the other ones do not. This is coming from the Hopper uh, Botany pots. And then right here, the Garden Cloche itself, you can see the different farmland is going to give us different yields on our Inferium Essence based off the same seed. But when it comes to other things, that's not the case. Uh, it's only going to give us two. So if we take a look here at, uh, let's say, Invar, for example, it's only going to give us two. And if we search up specifically for Invar, you can see this one only gives us one per process. But if this process is twice as fast as the Garden Cloche, then technically, if it was any faster than that, it would produce faster. And if this produces faster, it also produces seeds. And the Garden Cloche does not. These seeds, however, can be processed and uh, depending on what gives more seeds, with these seeds being processed, we can actually get more essence from it as well. So I, you know, I don't know. We're going to we're going to test this out, like I said, and find out. I think I'm going to find a resource that I'm kind of lacking in and I'm going to see if I can't make a seed for it. So I think I'm going to go with a coal seed that just seems uh, like a pretty decent seed to sort of start off with. Um, and it doesn't require too much to make this, except for this interesting crafting recipe and uh, process you have to go through that is new to mystical agriculture. So, uh, right here, we need to place on the pedestal basically what the recipe requires. So, for this coal seed, for example, it is going to require the infusion crafting. And you can see right here, this is the crafting format. And whenever you place this infusion altar down, altar down it does give you like a little blueprint for where to place these infusion pedestals. They're actually pretty cheap. You just need a little bit of wool and red dye and some stone and gold, and that's about it. That's all these really require. Um, so once we have this, now we need to place in our essence. Last but not least, we place this. And if I remember correctly, um, I have to click on it. Shift click on it. Redstone. Redstone. I think it's a lever. Yes, it's a redstone signal. Um, and then it should it should work. It's been a little while since I've messed with this mod. Um, but yeah, redstone signal works. Perfect. Um, so that's just one. Like I said, I need to make uh, more than one of them. So I need to get all this back down. And I'm going to make three so we can get this test underway. So now, since I can't be in all these machines at once, I'm going to try my best to do this as fast as possible and split these all up so I can um, hopefully get these in here as quickly as I can. So let's go ahead and go. And I just click on there, perfect. Okay, so these are growing. This is saying it's going to have a grow time of one minute. Um, this hasn't even started yet, even though it should have water. Actually, let's go ahead and pull these out. It does look like my water is not doing what it's supposed to do. 
Uh, it actually does not have water currently. I thought it would be filled up with water, but I think it's because my configuration is not set up. So auto input, and we need to input into the back of it for the water. That is the front. <laughs> is this the back? There's the back. Okay, auto input. There we go. Okay, now we have it set up. Okay, so the next thing I almost forgot is uh, this right here can accept a chest that should auto input into the chest. And then we need to kind of auto output here as well. And we are going to output the products onto the side so we can kind of see this better. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to try and go as fast as possible. There we go. And click that there. Perfect. Now this is running. Now, is it fast? Wow. It seems already awfully slow. Same for this. Very slow. It's probably roughly the same time as this as well. Wow, these are... These are not what they used to be and almost makes mystical agriculture like like where you, it almost makes it where you're going to you're going to need to go back to the old school. Like there's no way of mass production unless there's some kind of config to speed these up. Like this is just now going now. Fido grow would make the speed go faster. I'm almost wondering if this could go faster with some augments. Um, but so far, this is this seems to be the best option, I, I think. Because this is going to give off seeds. It's also going to give off the plant product. And the potential for a bone mill that only works on mystical agriculture plants. Hmm. I'm going to give this some time. See what we get from it. Um, and see how quickly these things work. And I'm also going to look into potential upgrades for this as well. And see what we can't come up with. Okay. Wow. So, so far. <laughs> so far we have a winner. Um, this right here gave us three. Uh, this literally just got done from the time I just got in here, like went back and it's done. But you can see it gave me back the seed and also the coal. It gave me one coal essence. Mm, not so hot on that front. That's a uh, that's a big oof. And this one gave me four so far. So this one's actually looking the best. This one's already done two processes and is about to do its third process before this has even had the chance to catch up um these two are looking neck to neck and neck but i think this one's probably doing the best so far this one i don't know i'm gonna make the upgrades and i'm gonna see how much quicker it can go with some upgrades on it and uh there's also an upgrade that will keep the seed inside there allowing for the automation to be a lot better like it says right now that seed um without me you know so i don't have to have some weird pipe thing going in here to route it back in so I can already say that the Garden Cloche is 100% winning out. We have eight here, six over here, uh, still going very slow uh, as far as this is concerned. And this is just uh, pathetic, <laughs> to say the least. Um, maybe this has its, it has its place, but as far as growing mystical agriculture stuff goes, it's a no. Uh, it does one at a time. It's only producing one coal essence. Uh, whereas these are producing like two to four. Um, I think these are producing at least two a piece. And yeah, it's just not, um, it's not doing any justice. I do have these upgraded. I, from what I understand, the flux linkage amplifier is going to be the best way to get it to use and go faster. Um, and then the cycle processing allows this to stay in here to continue processing this. So really because of this, we lose out on even more speed that we potentially could have. But it's still not enough, in my opinion, to keep up with these. There's just no way. No way it's catching up. And you can see, this only went up by one. So sometimes this only drops one, where it seems like this is almost guaranteed to drop two every single time. From what it's looking like, yeah, it's a guaranteed two. This one, it's a 75% chance, a 5% chance, and a 1% chance. So it's all chance-based. This is only one. And then this is also a small chance... I don't even know if this meaning it's going to duplicate it or it's meaning it's going to take this out and throw that over there. So yeah, I think the garden close definitely wins out. It's not super fast, but it's definitely effective and it gets the job done from what I'm seeing. So of course, guys, as always, I want to give a huge shout out to one of today's sponsors. And that is going to go to, if I can get it out, it's going to have to go in two different lines. Richard Harrison. I don't think oh it does fit so uh, yeah thank you to Richard Harrison thank you so much for your uh, your patronage and uh, guys if you're interested in becoming a patreon yourself 
of course, you can check the link in the description below underneath the Patreon section. So guys, if you did enjoy today's episode, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up if you, uh, of course, enjoyed. And if you haven't subscribed already, I highly recommend clicking that subscribe button, also ringing the notification bell. And uh, of course, there are some couple of settings there in that notification bell that I recommend checking. Um, like uh, the one that says actually get notified. <laughs> Because uh, YouTube's, uh, acts, uh, I don't know, YouTube cannot make up their mind on uh, on what who they want to send videos to. So guys, I hope you enjoyed. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.